Hello, everyone, and welcome to Armstrong in the Loop podcast. I'm your host, Seth Prentice, and today I'm joined by Holly Newman, Event and Outreach Coordinator for Adoption Connection PA. Holly, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Seth. Of course, it's a pleasure to finally get to speak to you on the podcast. We've been able to connect outside, and I just wanted to take time to not only learn about your agency, but also learn about yourself. Uh, it sounds like you have a, a unique story that connects to the adoption connection. Um, yes, um, I have um, my degrees in organizational leadership is my master's degree and my undergrad in communications. Um, I started out my career working in human resources and um, then I had my daughter and I resigned and was a stay-at-home mom. And my husband and I became foster parents. And I was a stay-at-home mom for seven and a half years. When my daughter went to school full-time, I decided it was time to get back into the workforce. So I applied for a recruiter position thinking it was a human resource job. When I got there, I realized that it was a family recruiter job for a human resource agency who needed foster parents. So I did that for a few years. Then I started working as a foster care caseworker, and I did that for a few years. And that is when I learned about adoption casework, and I met Adoption Connection PA's current executive director, Robin Thompson, and I met her at a training and I was looking to do adoption casework only. And um, a few weeks later, I was hired as a full-time adoption caseworker at Adoption Connection PA. I served as an adoption caseworker for seven years Wow! and I am on my eighth year at Adoption Connection and I have been serving as the events and outreach coordinator for approximately a year now, a little over a year. That's fantastic. And it sounds like you know a lot about it. So why don't we get into it? So tell us about Adoption Connection PA. Adoption Connection PA is a full service nonprofit licensed by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and the statewide adoption and permanency network. It is our mission to foster hope for children and families. It is our goal to find permanent homes for children. And we were established in 1995. Wow. So you're coming up on, uh, well, I guess last year would have been the anniversary year for all of you. Yes. Do you often get people that are looking to adopt or are they looking to foster? Is it a little of both? <laughs> um, a little of both. Um, currently, we are searching for foster parents. Um, there is, I would call it crisis in Western Pennsylvania right now, finding foster homes for older youth, for children ages seven and up. So we are really looking for individuals who have a heart for older children, sibling groups, and those of various cultures. Is that pretty common in your social service line? You know, is it older children that are, tend to have a more difficult time finding a home or is it uh, something that's really just happened over the past few years? I think it has gotten a little bit worse over the past few years. However, I think all along, most people are looking for an infant or a younger child to foster in hopes to adopt them. So we are advertising and doing some outreach surrounding and education surrounding how great it is to have even teenagers in your home as a foster parent. When I was a foster parent, I had teenage girls. And yes, it was challenging at times. However, it was really great when you could watch the seeds that you were sowing in them and see them succeed. That's amazing. And you know, just from your own experience there, uh, do you still stay in touch with those girls? Uh, you know, how, how have they been since, you know, uh, they've left your nest? 
Well, I had several girls and I did keep touch with the one who had, who was in my home for the longest, but um, we kind of lost touch at this point, but that, that wasn't really on my end. That was more on her end. So now that we're starting to talk about what is adoption connection, uh, can you tell me a little bit about some of the services that you provide as you guys do a lot of stuff, especially just (laughs) going on your website and looking? No, thank you. Um, I will just go down the line on the different services. We have our birth mother program, and that is what our agency was founded on, um, helping birth mothers who are in crisis pregnancies. Currently, we have a birth mother specialist, and she meets with these women, and she works with them, and sometimes the birth fathers, if they are involved, and she helps them through the process of deciding on whether they will place the baby for adoption or parent the baby themselves based on the birth mother's circumstances. Um, The birth mother specialist continues working with the birth mother, whether she is wanting to place or parent. It's a completely free service, and We will work with the birth mother until she decides that she doesn't want to work with us anymore. If she chooses to place her baby for adoption, Adoption Connection has a list of families who have chosen what is called domestic adoption. So we have that program. And the birth mother specialist will provide books, photos, and family profiles, which have been written by Adoption Connection, Mm -hmm. about several of our domestic waiting families. And the birth mother, if she chooses, will be involved in deciding who she wants to interview, which she can also do, sit down and have interviews with these families. And the birth mother specialist works with her all through this and and sits with her and helps her make the decision. And she is able to decide what family her child is placed in. She also does have a say if she wants to have an open adoption where perhaps she gets pictures sent to her. So um, we try to make it about the birth mother and her needs and wants. And then we also have somebody working with the family who gets selected. So the day of the child's birth, there is a representative from our agency for both the adoptive parents as well as the birth mother. So that's kind of the domestic adoption program and the birth mother program wrapped into one. The next program I spoke a little bit about already, the foster care program. Currently, we have 60 foster families and we are serving 55 foster children. These children are from all of North and southwestern Pennsylvania, and our parents are also located in those areas. Once our foster parents are approved, we have a matching specialist who works with children, youth, and services from all of these counties, and they try to find an appropriate match for the foster family. Once the child is identified, there are usually several pre-placement visits prior to the child actually being placed there. And then once the child is placed there, they have a foster care caseworker who stands alongside that family and helps that family find services for the child that's needed, maybe therapy, maybe even a doctor's office if they can't find one or a specialist maybe the child needs. The foster care caseworker will also help mediate if there's any problems with the family and the child, like if they're an older child and they just need someone to kind of mediate what is happening in order to keep the placement healthy, as well as everybody happy and um, all of their needs being met. Does your agency work directly, you know, almost like a partnership with CYS? Yes, we are an affiliate of CYS. Yes. So they refer the children who need placed. And we also have an on-call service. So we answer the phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week for emergency placements. So if if you're a foster parent and you 
agree to be on the emergency placement list. If a child comes through one of the CYSs, they will call our on-call line and we will try to place that child right there that day. That's incredible. Yes. Sometimes it's like two in the morning and and you're calling foster parents and and they're so amazing. Like a lot of them say yes. No, I, yeah. I can't even imagine having to be in the position of, hey, we need to find you know something for this child at this moment. And you know, those people pick up the phone. That's that's incredible. Well, one of the new things that we are working on is having a database, for a lack of a better word, of families who are just willing to do that and also then provide some respite care so that these children are not sitting at the CYS office or at the hospital once they get their physical waiting for somewhere to sleep that night. This is something that we are are really working hard on achieving, having that database who will take basically, you know, any child of any age any race, any gender, so that these children aren't waiting. And that, and that can't be easy. And I'll, I, uh, I give credit to all those uh, people that are willing to do that because uh, those, yes, those kids deserve, well. uh, deserve a, a, a good life. And at least if they can provide something, especially in a traumatic moment, that's incredible. It, yes. Yes, it is. Yes. And, and, you know, if you decide to become what we, we would call a respite family, mm-hmm. then those would be the placements that you would, would receive. And they are not supposed to be there longer than two or three days. It would be like very short term. So it's a great way to give back to your community. And these kids are really great once given a chance. Didn't mean to sidetrack here. I know that you have a couple other services that you provide. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to talk about your statewide adoption network service? Yes, we work with the statewide adoption network or SWAN is what we refer to it. And we have SWAN caseworkers and we receive referrals from various counties of children who are in foster care, not necessarily in our foster family, but in any foster family, again, through Northwest and Southwest Pennsylvania. And our caseworkers serve two different um, responsibilities. They provide what we call a child profile. So the caseworker is required to meet and interview the child, meet and interview the foster parents, do research within whichever CYS they come from, like say if it's Butler or Beaver or Allegheny County, they have a file. So the caseworker will review that file. And within that file, there is generally a birth record, every doctor's appointment, every therapeutic appointment. A lot of the times there's family history, depending on how old the child is. It is best practice to interview the birth parents of the child as well. And you gather all of this information and compile it into a document, which we call the child profile. And they are generally 10 to 30 pages long. And these documents are used for placement of the children so that the potential foster or adoptive family has a history of the child and and their background. The document is kept at CYS and when the child turns 18, they can receive the document. And it answers a lot of questions for some kids that were placed early on in their life, especially. And they also use it, you know, prior to adoptions. So that's the first service the Swan caseworkers provide. The second is what they call child prep. The SWAN caseworkers work with the children using therapeutic type. They're not therapists, but they use therapeutic type activities generally in preparation for adoption. There's 10 sessions between the SWAN caseworker and the child, and it generally takes five to six months. And it's like every other week. The caseworker collects as many photos of their birth family pre-adoptive family, any experiences, and then they use whatever they have compiled over those 10 sessions and they 
put it together in what we call a life book. It is a scrapbook of the child's life. And what it's meant to be is like from birth until however old they are. And the child gets to keep that. In addition, there's an all about me section, uh, my family, my future section. So it kind of covers all the gamuts of the child. And, and it really can be anything the child wants to talk about and how they want to utilize the time with this SWAN caseworker. The CYS individuals and the SWAN people want a life book at the end. So you kind of have to put it together in a crafty kind of way. And the kids really love them. The next line of service we have is custody visits. This is a fairly new service. And basically, ACPA is referred by Beaver County Juvenile Services Division. And we oversee and supervise visits between a child or children and a parent who no longer is living with or has custody of the child due to whatever circumstances had happened between maybe the parents, um, maybe they're in the middle of a divorce or something like that, or there were some negative behaviors on one of the parents and maybe they're getting some therapy or something like that. And until then they have supervised visits. We also do searches for Beaver County and Butler counties for individuals who may have been adopted or they are looking or somebody who's looking for an adoptee or the adoptee is looking for their their birth parents or their birth siblings or cousins. Sometimes they even could be looking for medical history or family and heritage information. So we do that as well. And the last thing is we have our own outreach program and it is called community family closet. And what we do is we collect, sort, and organize new and gently used donations from the community. Once we receive the donations, we go through them, we find anything with holes and stains and broken, and we get rid of that. And in our basement, um, we have shelves with clothing sizes from newborn to adult 3x for male and female. And we will provide whatever clothing we have for anyone in the community who calls and says they need some help. We also collect hygiene items, toothpaste, baby supplies, toys, deodorant, shampoo, Um, and all of those things. And it is free of charge. All you have to do is call me. My name is Holly Newman and the phone number is 724-371-0671. And I will call you back and I will um, make sure you get the things that you need. Now, of course, it is based on what has been donated and what we have available at the time. Generally, we have clothes for anybody and we do have a lot of toys Sometimes we get furniture in, sometimes not. Diapers is another thing that we collect and wipes. And it's something that we give to anyone who asks. We also use those for our foster families if they need them as well. That's incredible. Uh, Do you take donations during the week? Is there a certain day or is it just, you know, by appointment? You can bring in donations anytime between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's incredible. Now, this is a great resource to use. I mean, you have a lot of different services that you provide, but the, yeah. but this is another one that I think uh, commonly isn't advertised. And, and if you don't know, then it, it's a, one of those things that, oh, hey, did you know? And, and that really helps Absolutely. people. Well, I, I did hear there are some new and exciting happenings at Adoption Connection PA. Can you tell us about those upcoming things? Yes. We are opening a second office in Duquesne, and we are in hopes of being able to serve even more children, hire more staff. It's kind of in its beginning stages. This is the first time we've had a second office. We're really looking forward to expanding our ability to serve even more children and families in the Pittsburgh area. And there's definitely a need, I'm sure, um, you know, Allegheny County is one of our largest counties in Western PA. So I'm sure there's definitely a need. Yes, yes, there is. 
you know, upcoming, uh, I know that we're here to help spread the word. There are two events that you're planning in for the near future. Can you tell us about your very first online auction? Sure can. We will be having an online auction. Um, we do not have the link as of yet, um, but I will be posting that on our Facebook page, our Instagram, and as well as um, our Twitter accounts and our website. And um, it's from April 8th until April 11th. And you can bid on items. This is a new thing for me and <laughs> for our agency. So we are hoping to have a good turnout. There are various different things that will be auctioned, some golf items, some other personal items. Basically, there are a lot of range of different things. We are looking for donations such as game tickets, movie tickets, um, show tickets, things like that, that we can auction off during that time as well. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how it goes. Well, we, we wish the best of luck and uh, maybe we'll be able to come on and try to bid and uh, help all of you raise more money for the cause. That would be great. Now for your second event that you have upcoming, can you give us details about the fourth annual tee off for kids? Yes, we are having our fourth golf outing. It is at the Blackhawk Golf Course, which is located at 644 Blackhawk Road, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. It starts at 7 a.m. on May 21st, and it's an 8 a.m. shotgun start. Um, it's the scramble format. It is $100 per person. The $100 includes breakfast, food at the turn, like a lunch, and a steak dinner, unlimited beverages, a chance to win a brand new Nissan Sentra from Beaver County Auto. This year, we were fortunate enough to find an organization who will be providing Tea Off for Kid t-shirts for all of the golfers. So we're excited about that. Prizes for um, the winners, the top three winners and the actually the worst score as well. And um, we also have a basket raffle. And we usually have 15 wonderful baskets that are put together by our agency, as well as various donors. I well, think it's... I covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying, it sounds like a great day to come out and golf on uh, May 21st. I will say that. Yes, it is. Um, you know, this event is is even fun for for the people working it, we have such a, a nice time and we've really had pretty good weather every single time we've had it so far. So, <laughs> well, fingers keep those crossed. fingers crossed, right? I've right. seen snow in May before and yeah. uh, <laughs> only yeah, knows with, with, with what we've been through for the past year or so, uh, only knows what uh, May 21st could bring, but I hope it's sun and warm weather. Yes, me too. <laughs> Well, Holly, anything else that you'd like to share with our audience today? Um, I would just like to encourage anyone who has a heart for foster care or children in general who just, just really need guidance, mentoring, someone to stand beside them and help them out because um, these children are, are just not fortunate. And all every child needs is just one person to take the time to help them and guide them and show them. And if you think you can be that person, please call us. Our phone number again is 724-371-0671. Even if you think maybe you might be that person, you can sit down and meet with our executive director, Robin Thompson, and she will provide a full orientation on what it takes to become a foster parent, as well as answer any questions that you might have and just explain the ins and outs of becoming a foster parent. 
and, and then you can make a decision. Maybe sometime in your life, you felt like you could, but then something said, you're not sure because you didn't have the answers Come and find the answers. And then, you know, you might be like with the support of an agency like adoption connection, I can do this because we just, we need more people who are willing to open their home and open their heart to children in need. Well, I thank you so much for coming on and joining us today and sharing all this great information. You know, we hope that we might be able to help provide, you know, one, two, who knows how many people, but uh, we hope that we can help here today. And uh, we'll share all of your contact information in the show notes for listeners so that they can reach out and help Adoption Connection PA. For Armstrong in the Loop podcast, I'm Seth Prentice, keeping you in the loop. Are you enjoying Armstrong in the Loop podcast? Great news. All past and current episodes are available on popular streaming apps and websites. Search Armstrong in the Loop podcast and subscribe today.